paano ang puso natin if Jesus is not there. My dear brothers and sisters, mga hinigugma, diha ni Kristo. We are now on the second Sunday of Advent. As we continue to prepare and wait for the coming of our Lord, our readings for today present to us three exhortations worth reflecting that could help us in our preparation. In the first reading, we heard the exhortation from the prophet Baruch. Baruch is the secretary and close friend of the prophet Jeremiah. In his writings, he personified Jerusalem as a widow mourning for her exiled children in Babylon. But God speaks words of comfort and consolation to them and comes to their rescue. Take notice that the word glory is repeated six times in the first reading, reminding the Israelites to step out from their misery and bask in the glory of God, who will escort them with His mercy and justice. The second exhortation is from St. Paul in the second reading, who assures the Philippians of his prayers. He tells them the content of his prayers, quote, that your love may lead you each day to a deeper knowledge and clearer discernment, that you may have good criteria for everything so you may be pure of heart and come blameless to the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of holiness that comes through Christ Jesus for the glory and praise of God." Unquote. And the third exhortation is from John the Baptist, the protagonist in our gospel today. He is, or his is the voice, crying out in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John's message emphasizes the need to prepare our hearts, to cleanse all that is filthy in us, to turn away from all that hinders us from following the Lord that we may obtain forgiveness for our sins. My dear brothers and sisters, have you noticed the common denomination or the common denominator or the recurring theme in our three readings today? It is a call to step out from our misery to joy. It is an invitation to move out from our old ways to something new, leading to a life of holiness for the glory and praise of God. John the Baptist reminds us that we have to prepare ourselves because something great awaits us. We are meant for something great. But we have to do something in order to be found worthy for that great grace. At the beginning of every celebration of the Holy Mass, the priest or presider would invite us to acknowledge our sins, that we may be less unworthy to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And so we do together the penitential act. We pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, etc. Here we beg God's mercy and forgiveness for our faults, for our failings, for our shortcomings. And we express our need to be reconciled with God 
and with one another. Once again, right before Holy Communion, we acknowledge our unworthiness when we say, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Unquote. It is an act of humility preparing us to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. In like manner, John the Baptist tells us to prepare ourselves to confess our sins and be reconciled with God as we are about to receive Jesus in our midst when He is born to us on Christmas Day. And what better way to prepare our hearts for His coming than to avail of the sacrament of reconciliation? To ask the question from the song, Paano ang puso ko kung wala ka? To reform our lives and to willfully direct our steps in following the ways of the Lord because without Him, our hearts would be empty. Paano ang puso natin if Jesus is not there? As we busy ourselves with the many preparations for Christmas, wrapping our gifts for our family and friends, decorating our homes, our office, and surroundings with Christmas lights. May we likewise spend some precious moments wrapping our hearts with prayer and reconciling it with God and our brothers and sisters. May our Lord Jesus find a worthy dwelling in our hearts when He comes. A blessed Second Sunday of Advent to you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>